Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing some tips and tricks and we're going to also talk about some major text transformation opportunities in Comfy, the likes you've probably not seen before. It's really, really exciting. As always, please feel free to share and subscribe and let's get into it. So first we're going to start with something, what we had been talking about before around uh, blocking uh, as it involves different processes within your workflow. And I was actually educated on this topic recently uh, by Jags in the Discord channel, and I thought it was really, really cool, so I wanted to share it. Uh, basically, instead of blocking individual uh, tasks or nodes within your workflow, uh, you're able to actually block entire groups that you put together. Um, just to show you quickly, uh, as always, we have kind of an initial sampler setup, and we're going to if I zoom out here, we're going to show you just a few different kind of initial areas of how you block and then kind of get into it a little bit more detailed. So uh, you can see, right, as I said, we have kind of like a general, you know, sampler setup. Uh, I have obviously have my sort of normal loading, you know, areas set up as well. And then, you know, here we only have a face detailer, which is not very complex. Of course, it's only one big node, um, but this is a good initial example. Now, normally, we would use impact bridge or we would use the bypasser node to be able to quickly block that, right? So you would just go and say bypass and you'd say fast bypass, bypasser and then you'd connect it and then you could use that as kind of like an on off switch. And we've done that many times before. But what's interesting that I was educated on was you actually can put many things in a single group and block the entire group. And so you can see above here uh, I have something called the group bypasser, right? So if you see the fast group bypasser and same for the muter as well, and it actually pretty much sets itself up once you create a group. So in this case, I have two. I have this basic example and I have the more advanced example down below, which I'm gonna show you. But you can see, I just created a group and named it face detailing, and it automatically created a row here so that when I click it, it automatically bypasses. In fact, right, if I look at my second group here, uh, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different nodes in here. And so obviously, with all those nodes, I would have to do individual bypasses. But in this case, if I just simply go and click no, it, it bypasses every single node in that group. So this is really, really handy um, to be able to set that up. Now, additionally, you may say, well, you know, how do I make sure that some groups are going to be uh, blocked and other groups are not going to be blocked. And so what you can actually do is in the uh, bypasser that you're setting up, right? So if I set up a new group bypasser in the properties panel, uh, you can go to the color area and the match colors, right? And so when you match the colors, you're going to do it by the, the color hex values. So again, this is more of an advanced technique, so I wouldn't worry about it. For now, at least, you have the ability very quickly to be able to uh, to block entire groups of, of activities. Okay, next, I want to give a quick update to uh, the ability to cut and paste different layers into your blending activities and other sort of compositing activities. You know, previously, we had done a lot around uh, using the mask cut and mask paste, uh, which is still very effective. Sometimes I find that the paste is a little more challenging because you'll draw areas, uh, you know, in the, your your preview window to on where you want to paste your objects, and it won't come out right, or you'll, maybe it'll be stretched or shrunk or whatever. And so I found a technique that's a little more effective in terms of both placement and sizing of your cut and paste objects. So we're going to start out again, normal sort of loader uh, setup that I've set up in my node templates. And we're going to go to our second area here. So here we have kind of an ancient library background, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm going to have a wizard. Okay, and you can see that there's a batch size of four. So I actually like uh, the fourth one here. So we're going to come up here. And we're going to do image selector as we've seen in the other videos. And I'm going to select image number four. And you can see I have my control bridge here. So I didn't want it to go through the rest of my flow yet. Uh, so I'm going to now make that active. Now, the this is just the background, right? We're going to also want to create our main character here. 
So I'm going to quickly unblock these guys. And so I have just you know, an angry wizard raising a staff overhead, etc. And so, okay, in this case, I have uh, four different wizards. Uh, you know, I kind of like uh, this first one actually the best because I'm going to be able to do some fun uh, effects with the, the staff here. So we're going to select number one. So we'll go make that active. And, you know, in this case, we want to do our normal sort of cut and paste. So here we're going to go into our detector and we will detect and see how close that is. It's pretty good. Uh, we're going to add the staff here as well. All right, add his feet. Right. All right, you see there's a little bit of extra that needs to be added here, which we'll do in our, uh, in our simple mask editor here. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, so we have our item masked. Now, this is where things are a little different. So instead of previously just doing the preview window and painting on there around uh, the masking, we are actually going to do something called joining the alpha. Um, no special custom nodes are needed for this. These are all foundational uh, for these. And uh, we're going to basically invert the mask, which is going to kind of flip the background so that it actually looks at the uh, main subject. And then we're going to join it with the main image. And so what it's going to actually do, if I just preview, is it actually cuts out that, uh, as you would do in the normal mask cut, but you can see it's a very kind of clean cut, right? You don't see many of some of the little edges uh, that we may have seen in the previous way of doing cutting. And then we want to be able to paste. So now how do we paste, which is a little different? We're gonna do image overlay. And so why does this matter? Why is this different? Because in image overlay, instead of having to paint and re-render and paint and re-render, I can just use the X and Y axis here to just shift where I want my wizard to go. So I can go and say, all right, well, I want my wizard to be a little left, a little higher, right? Perfect. Maybe it's maybe it's a little, maybe a little too big, right? I, I want my wizard to be a little smaller, let's say. So let's, uh, you know, cut the this resize down a little bit here, right? And you may have to play with it a little bit. Uh, just to get the right sizing that you want. But you can see the ability to quickly shift and bring your subjects to exactly where you want it to go uh, is very, very quick, right? So let's say this is our final spot. Now, of course, as the other video showed, we haven't done any sort of blending, right? So there's no shadows, nothing else. And so this is where we're going to send it into our canvas to add some little effects. And then at that point, we're going to do our sort of final uh, blending. So you can see, uh, let's undo our, our send to editor, right? So we're gonna send our image into the editor. All right, there we go. Uh, perfect, you can see there's our image right there, great. Um, and so we're gonna add some kind of blue portal sort of uh, view here, right? So we're gonna just kind of uh, create a new layer and we're going to just kind of create like a little portal here. As always, I worked very hard to go through art school. Okay, nice and bluey, right? And maybe we'll add like a little bit of uh, kind of blue sort of, uh, you know, lightning or, or sort of transfer. All right, there we go. And uh, so that's all good. Uh, now, as always, right, we want to make sure that we are selecting our current image, which is great. And you can see now down here in our canvas that we have everything lined up, which is great. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now we're ready to bring it into our final stage or kind of our blending sort of area. Um, as you can see, I'm using my fast group bypasser now. So I can just undo all of that. And I'm going to bring my image in here. And now just as always, right, we want to kind of do some general description. So we have ancient African wizard creating a blue portal, ancient library background, uh, and with a book, a kind of blurring effect. All right, and we'll see how this goes. Now, as always, right, we're going to play with our denoise to see how much blending we want to do, how much compositing. And so 
So at 0.69, it significantly changes the difference, right? And the entire look is different, so it's way too much. So we're gonna bring it way down here, try again. All right, in this case, 0.35 doesn't do enough. So let's just pick it up a little bit. Nope, not enough, kick it up a little bit. Not enough, kick it up a little bit. Right, and you keep on bringing up just a little bit on that denoise um, so that you can get to the right level. Now, this is cool. This is a cool effect. I'm, I've lost my staff though. So I just wanna go down just a little bit to see if I can get, there we go. We've got the staff, we've got kind of like the portal here. Um, I don't see as much shadow, so I wanna actually add that, uh, you could say, uh, heavy shadows. Let's see if that helps us a little bit. There we go, right? We got some shadow, shadow on the staff, and even it even drew a little bit more into the kind of uh, blasting, the blue blast sort of effect. So let's say I kind of like that, and so I wanna bring it now to my uh, preview bridge to save, etc. and I like it, it's pretty good. So you can see there's a lot of power here, uh, and obviously I did this very, very quickly, but uh, the cool thing that to take into consideration is this image overlay. Uh, it is part of the efficiency node, so you'll want to get that as the custom node. And uh, this cut and paste technique is pretty uh, powerful. So definitely something to check out. Okay, our final example here is the really cool text transformation that I was talking about. And so what we're going to do basically is show how to now, using that cut and paste technique, to bring stylized font text into your canvas to then really do some major transformation. And so you could see just to start, uh, I have created a very basic prompt, right? Some uh, cyan neon cursive bakery, rocks bakery. By the way, this whole uh, session, uh, I've been using the uh, Sleipner STXL Turbo uh, model. This is our top model right now uh, in the top 10 STXL top 10 model list. And, uh, but by going, you know, creating this text uh, and this prompt, you can see that the actual end result is not so bad, right? You know, it has uh, grok in it, and it, but it also has all this extra text. Um, and even though it does have a bakery, which is great, uh, and it does a little bit have a little bit of the Eiffel Tower, it's not really the look and feel that I was kind of having it uh, envisioned in my head. And so I wanted to be able to do a little bit more with it. And so first things first, I wanted to create some text, right? We're gonna kind of bypass all this other stuff first. And to start us off, right, um, I wanted to create kind of our image using draw text. This is part of the comfy role custom node that we've done before. And uh, I wanted to create this Grox Bakery. Uh, and so when I do it, uh, I have this like really nice cyan, nice cursive font, right? I found a, a cursive font off of 1001 fonts, uh, that website. And um, I like it, right? It has a nice cursive style, which I kind of want to bake into my final image. And so we're going to, again, do this sort of join with alpha. Um, this is the key piece to this called image color to mask, right? The color, since right here uh, you can see, is black, which is color zero. And so I'm basically taking my image, I'm putting that in here into my join with alpha, the alpha part, right? The kind of black outside uh, kind of background area, we are putting into the image color to mask. So the image that this text mod node is producing, this image is going into image color to mask saying select all the zero color, the black color, and then bring it and join it into the alpha to remove it. And so the end result is just the text, right? If we zoom in, it's just the text. Now you'll see it's a little jaggedy and that's fine because when you do the final rendering, it will go away. So I like this a lot. I'm gonna bring it in to now my canvas just as we have before. So what do we do? We're gonna... To... And now when I send it in, now it only sends in my text itself, which is great, right? That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, Awesome. And so you can see before I had a full white background, which is not what we'll want. So I cleared out that kind of base uh, background. So you can see the kind of it's all invisible now. All right. So now we have a kind of initial setup, which is great. And I want to draw the, the rest of my sign. Now, I don't want to draw on my text layer. I'm going to actually draw uh, below it, right behind it. 
So I'm going to create a sort of dark sort of sign sort of color. But before I do that, I will want to create a cool little kind of riffle around it. So I'm going to do this and I will make it small. So we're going to now thinking about that, we want to create a sign that is going to be a little closer like that. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Uh, but it's, I think, going to be close enough. Now, we're going to also want to uh, create an internal sort of uh, fill. Uh, and unfortunately, this mod, this node does not have yet uh, a fill capability, which would be very easy. So instead, we're just going to do a quick draw here at full speed. And we're going to just draw. Uh, OK, so I like this a lot. So now we have our sign here. Um, I'm going to also add a little uh, metal pole. So we'll just do that right there, no big deal, um, which is great. Now, I want also to add um, the Eiffel Tower in the background uh, because I think that would be fun. So we're going to, let's see, the Eiffel Tower is a little, kind of a, a rusty brownish sort of color, right? Um, but it's also kind of nighttime. So we're going to do that. Hey, okay, great. We'll add some lights. So we'll add some lights to our Eiffel Tower. Awesome. And, um, you know, maybe that's good for now. But you can see, you can get the sense of, of what you're going to get to. And so, as I was always, we're going to make sure this is our selected item. And if we look at our canvas here, all right, we've got uh, this. Obviously, you can't see the metal pole. Um, but the next stage is to bring it to a final rendering. So we're going to now bring this into the VAE encode. I'm going to actually unblock these guys. I should be using the group block a little bit more, but we're doing this as a quick example. And I see the cyan neon cursive bakery sign. All right, I'm going to make sure I have it on a metal pole, uh, dark blue sign spotlights, Paris urban night, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, so all looks good. Again, we're going to play around with our denoise quite a bit as we start to render to see how this goes. Yeah, and let's see how things start to look. Uh, okay, so already off the bat, I barely even touch. I didn't even touch it yet. You could see we've got our Eiffel Tower. We've got a nice neon sign already uh, on a metal pole. Now it doesn't look so realistic, um, so we're going to have to play with it a little bit more. So let's maybe bump it up a little bit on the. Uh, Denoise, maybe step down the CFG a little bit so it's not as heavy on the saturation. And wow, look at this. Already pretty good. Um, you know, I don't quite like the little uh, dash here. Uh, we can see what's going on as we're continuing to render maybe a few different versions of there. There we go. like that a lot. Um, it's nice. I like it. I have the Eiffel Tower here, which is great. Um, I want a little bit more of si more city life. Right? I don't see that a lot there. So I'm going to quickly say Paris city traffic background evening. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Uh, not so much. We're going to bump it up a little bit more. So you get to play with this quite a bit, but you can see it doesn't take very long, but it follows what you're trying to get to at the end of the day. So hope this was helpful. Um, this is a very, very great technique to continue to expand upon and have a great day.